Hi, and welcome back to SS Coffee Break. And if you saw the last uh, session, last video with, with Barclay Ray. So what you were talking about, Barclay, about, you know, where we are right now. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're just getting into the point where organizations are, are, are starting to look at what they do now in, as, uh, almost as a more normal way. Yeah. In the last three or four weeks, month or so, we're just at the beginning of April now, but you know, from the middle of February to through March, most organizations have really just put the shutters up and, and been doing what they do and getting as many people to work from home as yeah. possible. Obviously there's a huge challenge of yeah, that for, yeah. for many of them. And, and you know, as, as, a, as somebody who does stuff with organizations, there's been no way of, interfering with that you know we've just Absolutely. been kind of staying, staying well away i think actually even just in the last few days there's been quite a uh a take up of you know just well how do we make this work with yeah. this and, that, and and the sort of second phase of stuff you know we've got all the important key things underway or planned mm. and now we're starting to look at how we do the other things that we were doing and that's you know that's what that's more interesting for uh, the likes of you and I and yeah. and, and others in, in the industry. Yeah, totally. Um, but you know, even I mean, I've worked at home, from home for twenty five years, but I still spend about half my time going out, seeing people, clients, going to events, and so on. So it's been it's been challenging. I've found it challenging in in a way that I, you know, probably didn't expect. Um, but you know, you just have to kind of get on with it, really. And 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 certainly. I can't believe the how quickly organisations have adapted. Um, it's that necessity thing, isn't it? The mother of all invention. How quickly organisations have adapted to work from home. And, and even in organisations where we may have both been in and questioned them before about the potential of the service desk working remotely from home and usually having, no, we can't because, that's just changed, you know, and that's just in the service desk. So what are you seeing, Barclay? What, what do you think is sort of happening out there? What does it mean for the, for the social sort of, uh, you mentioned the, the social well, state, if you I, like. I you think know? one of the, yeah, I mean, we, obviously people are talking about their ability to, to do business continuity. Business continuity has been something that we've been dealing with forever, one way or another, um, you know, with disaster recovery plans and disaster recovery tests and, all sorts of, I mean, I've, I've been doing that for 25 years in one way or another in, in terms of thinking about how you would cope with all sorts of the different situations. Some of them are not what you expect. You know, you, there's always the absolute nightmare disaster scenario, the, the plane crashing into the building, the, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But actually, most disasters tend to be less dramatic. They tend to be floods or you know things where it's a kind of secondary reaction and that's exactly what's happened with this is that it you know it is it is a very serious very very serious health crisis but there's also this huge uh, sort of tidal wave of of reactions that's kicked off and, and is affecting pretty much everything there's, there's, i can't think of anything that's just completely untouched by it you know from sport music charities are going to the wall business is going to the wall government bailing out governments like the uk government that you know not very long ago said they didn't have any money and all of a sudden you know there's money being found and and so and and you know you always knew that there's money in in sort of war chests and disaster there's always been that but it's it's just changed everything and I think the, one of the biggest challenges, once we've got past the, okay, we've got everybody working from home, we've got everybody doing, using Teams and Zoom or whatever it is they're using and, and having meetings that way, <clears throat> how do we sort of maintain the, the broader fabric of, of our, I'm calling it social continuity, mm -hmm. you know, what, what is it, how, how we interact as people and what we do is, is much more than just have meetings, formal meetings, have individual meetings, um, you know, write papers and, and so on. That, that's the output of what we do. But 
so much of the interactions that we have are in the kind of margins, you know, on on trips, on on in the corridor, on the way to lunch, mm -hmm. and that social cohesion is something that's going to be really difficult to to yeah. rebuild. Yeah. You know, I, I agree on it. I'm like you, Barclay. You know, um, we both work from home. I've worked from home now for six years, and and I it took me honestly, it took me about three years to come to terms with not working directly with a team day to day. Um, and, and that was that was quite difficult. I found it quite difficult, I'll be honest. You, you know, I worked in a very close team, a very successful team, um, a very dynamic team. And then to come to an environment where you're interacting differently was, I found a real challenge. And I think we're starting to see that, you know, in a in microcosm with, with, with our team just working uh, in, in, in remotely now. Um, and, and giving the, them the opportunity, thankfully, with this kind of technology, because guess what? If this had happened 10 or 15 years ago, we, we wouldn't be in this state right now, would we? We wouldn't be able to do this right now. Um, so that, that's an interesting, an interesting point on the social fabric of, of teams, the dynamics, and obviously what that means in, in form of collaboration, right the way to the end of, of value creation. So it's, an, it's interesting because, you know, I, I think what you guys did with that before was superb. I love the value aspect of it. And, and I just wonder about in this time now, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does value mean to a, a team that is remote that may find it harder to, to collaborate uh, and get to the end of that sort of value street, those value streets, the end of that value cycle? What do you think that means? Well, I mean, I, I do think it, it forces, I mean, as a general point, that this whole situation has forced a lot of things, you know, the sort of the well has the, the dam has been broken a lot of things i yeah. kind of slightly think that we might have coped certainly 10 years ago when I mean, we've had this sort of technology one way or another it's not been very good yeah for a long time yeah. but we, we would have found ways we've had vi audio conferencing for a long time mm -hmm. video conferencing for a little while um i think there's been a a resistance and a lack of trust from a lot of organizations to really push this out and, and it is a risk. I understand I understand that for a lot of businesses. But that dam has burst and that's changed everything now. So we have to kind of rethink again. And it does, for me, it completely confirms the thing that we've been saying for a long time about value, which is that we need to understand what it means. It's not an abstract yeah. Yeah. entity that we kind of pull out of the sky and go, this is a beautiful thing and it shines. It is, it's simply what, what does that mean in terms of the outputs that we produce for our colleagues and customers and being clear on what it is that we're expected to do, what we're expected to deliver, whether we're working in the service desk or we're, you know, working, doing professional services, whatever, whatever we're doing, we need to be absolutely clear on what the priorities are and what that will deliver. And the difficult bit is, it's like kids going from school to university, you know, or, or primary to secondary school. There's this, this sudden change of going, hang on, I'm not being told what to do here. I have to work it out for myself. I have to manage my own time. I have to manage my own workload and so on. That's difficult. Nobody's intuitively good at that. So there's that kind of change of how do we manage our time? How do we, how, you know, and without those kind of reassuring social interactions, it's the social interactions, I think, that reassure people, just nudge them back and say, yeah, that's really good what you're doing, or hang on, wait a minute, what, what are you saying there? Let's have a look at that again. And those things do happen in the corridors, they do happen, you know, in the margins of, of, of work, rather than everything being prescribed and written down and, and so on. Yeah. So I mean, I, I would hope the organisations would learn that they, they shouldn't be trying to prescribe everything, but they need to recognise that there are different types of work. There are some types of work that are collaborative and need to have face-to-face -face contact, and that there are types of work that can be done, and a lot more that can be done remotely than probably they previously thought. Good. Okay, we, we're gonna we're gonna draw this one this um, session to a close, Barclay. But we'll yeah we follow on with some of those themes I think in the next one if that's okay. So thank you to everybody listening. Thank you, Barclay, and we'll see you in the next session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.